As worldwide protests against racism and police brutality spreads across the globe, attention has turned to how stereotypical images of people of color are an inherent facet of mainstream culture, right down to our breakfast options. Prompted by this moment of national reckoning, companies are finally being forced to change brands, mascots, and logos that have long been criticized as racist. For this list, All Things Top 5 looks at the top 5 brands that didn't age well and that are still around today. With the current social climate changing, they might not be around for long. Hmm. Is that racist? Why are you asking me? Number 5. Aunt Jemima. Just pour out Aunt Jemima buckwheat mix from the yellow box. Then, add milk. Serve with crisp brown pork sausage or with ham or bacon. Quaker Oats announced that it will retire its Aunt Jemima brand of syrup and pancake mix, saying that the company recognizes that Aunt Jemima's origins are based on a racial stereotype. In the late 1800s, the Missouri newspaper editor and noted white dude, Chris L. Rutt, decided to name his brand of self-rising flour after old Aunt Jemima, a song performed by minstrel actors. Minstrels are white actors in blackface who mocked and derided black people while acting like buffoons. Hey, I think we got something there. I'm sure we have. A former slave named Nancy Green was hired to portray Aunt Jemima as a mammy, a racist caricature that depicted female slaves as smiling, happy homemakers for white families. You see an African-American woman and the first thing you think is Aunt Jemima gonna oh. whip us up some flapjacks. No, no, no. I need to bring my own bandana or you gonna supply me with one? <laughs> In 1914, the company was renamed the Aunt Jemima Mills Company due to Nancy Green's popularity. Her likeness was still reduced to a racist caricature. The vice president and chief marketing officer of Quaker Foods North America said the company has worked to update the brand over the years to be appropriate and respectful, but it realized the changes were insufficient. Over 130 years, Aunt Jemima's image was altered to reflect the changing times. Her last makeover was in 1989 when her headband was removed which was seen as perpetuating the plantation myth, and pearl earrings were added. Despite the cosmetic changes, Aunt Jemima was still representative of a very specific and narrow way of seeing black women. Our people are making strides. The Aunt Jemima label is less racist than in days past. Are you kidding me? Number four, Uncle Ben's. Uncle Ben's rice, and not to be confused with Peter Parker's perpetually assassinated uncle from the Spider-Man movies, is the latest in a line of brands that are under fire. Uncle Ben's parent company, Mars, announced that it will be evolving the Uncle Ben's brand. Yeah, to be honest, I don't see much difference. (laughs) Uncle Ben was first introduced in 1946 as the black face of a white company. Dressed in a bow tie and addressed as uncle, the character evoked a servant. According to the company's website, the name Uncle Ben is that of a black Texan rice farmer and the images of a black Chicago chef and waiter named Frank Brown. Originally, the rice was called Uncle Ben's Plantation Rice and has a contentious history since white Southerners once used uncle and aunt as honorifics for older blacks because they refused to say Mr. and Mrs. since those titles were only used for their white peers. You've been like an uncle to me. Like a kind old Uncle Remus. In 2007, after more than six decades of servitude, Mars reinvented Uncle Ben by dropping uncle and promoting him to a corporate CEO. On the brand's website, Ben became portrayed as a successful businessman with a well-appointed office, a busy schedule, and grains of wisdom to share. Apparently, the only way a colored person could become CEO of Mars is if he's a fictitious character. So you have a black boss, and it's freaking you out. Is it freaking you out? A little bit. You freaked out? To be honest. Number three, cream of wheat. When it's cold and rough outside, Come on, Tyler. try something warm and creamy inside. Cream of wheat hot cereal. Or instant mix and eat. The box for Cream of Wheat, which began in 1893, originally featured a racist caricature of black Americans with a chef named Rastus, a slow-witted former slave who spoke in broken English. I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Rastus was a pejorative and generic name for a black man that appeared in newspapers and magazines as a racist joke. While Cream of Wheat has stated that the current chef image is based on a photo of a chef working in a Chicago restaurant, the company never bothered to record the man's name. However, Frank L. Wright, a chef from Michigan, 
is said to have told friends and neighbors that he was the model for the cream of wheat chef. When White died in 1935, the local newspaper described him as someone who had posed for an advertisement of a well-known breakfast food. White is currently buried in an unmarked grave and is referenced as unmarked colored grave, according to city records. Changing the image may have toned down the overt racism Rastas invoked, but the subtext behind the imagery remained the same. Very clever, but still racist. <laughs> Number 2. Eskimo Pie What's the correct temperature to serve Eskimo pie? Well, most people just serve it right out of the freezer. Me, I serve it at room temperature. Treat yourself to the natural vanilla and rich chocolate taste of a genuine Eskimo pie made with NutraSweet. Dryers, the company behind the nearly 100-year-old chocolate-covered ice cream bar, said it was time to rename their culturally insensitive brand. America's first chocolate-covered ice cream bar was introduced in 1921 and today still features an Eskimo character on the box. Though Eskimo pies are a delicious ice cream snack, the name is steeped in controversy. According to the Alaska Native Language Center, while the word Eskimo is commonly used in Alaska to refer to Inuit and Yupik people, it's considered derogatory and was said to mean eater of raw meat by non-native colonizers who settled in the Arctic, implying these people are barbaric and violent. While some people call themselves Eskimos, it's a largely out-of-date term for non-Eskimos to use, with Inuit being the preferred term by many, one with less of a tie to the violent colonial past. Oh, whoa, whoa, hey, man, come on, careful with that. You gonna freeze yourself into an Eskimo, Eskimo pie? pie. Yeah, I'm Inuit, by the way, oh. Yeah, but Inuit pie isn't as funny. A spokesperson for Dryer's Ice Cream said in a statement that the company has been reviewing our Eskimo pie business for some time and will be changing the brand name and marketing. The company said it planned to have a new name by the end of the year and would discontinue the character of the Eskimo. Well, I'm off to petition my college for an Eskimo studies program. What? They don't have one? I'm sorry, Stan. I'd love to help you, but the Eskimos, their plight, that's the real stuff here. You care about the Eskimos? Yeah, yeah, I love their pies. Keep going. Walk, 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 walk. Before we get to number one, remember to subscribe to All Things Top 5 and ring the bell to be notified for our latest videos. Number one. Darky Toothpaste. Darky smile for me. Darky Toothpaste gives you a cool, fresh, tingling taste. Smile a darky smile for me. Darky with fluoride protects your teeth for clean, brighter smiles. Darky Toothpaste, so fresh you can feel the difference all day long. Smile a darky smile for me. Darky Toothpaste. Darley, formerly known as Darkie, a racial term for African Americans, is one of the leading toothpaste brands in China and has its roots deeply embedded in blackface. The brand, partially owned by Colgate Palmolive, now says it is working with their partner to review and further evolve all aspects of the brand, including the brand name. Do you have any idea how racist that is? The name was changed from Darkie to Darley in 1989 to reflect public opinion in the West. <laughs> The original logo was a man in blackface wearing a top hat and tuxedo while showing off his shiny white teeth with a big smile. The original name and logo was conceived in the 1920s when the then CEO visited the United States and saw Al Jolson, a white actor who performed in blackface in the film The Jazz Singer. The CEO thought Al Jolson's white smile and bright teeth would make an excellent toothpaste logo. Mommy. Despite all the changes, Darley's Chinese name continues to translate as black person toothpaste to this day. Wow, I wish you could hear how racist you sound right now. Colgate Palmolive has been working for 35 years to evolve the brand, including substantial changes to the name, logo, and packaging. The toothpaste brand currently has a new logo to make the character more racially ambiguous. Maybe you can tell me, am I black or white? You're under arrest. <laughs> what? Well, I guess I am black. Do you agree or disagree with our list? Do you find these brands racist or an overreaction by the PC culture? Comment below and watch our other videos and subscribe to All Things Top 5.